All right, let's do some fucking junk food. I got some junk food for you, okay? Here's the junk food, everybody. Some of you may know. Xerox 13, sir, with the fifth, with the $5. Thank you very much. I did it not for free. Now I can say I didn't do it for free. Thank you very, very much. Oh, you wanted the link? Wait, I posted the link a hundred times, Pansabi. There's the link. There you go. All right, everybody. Some of you may know that a couple of weeks ago, I made a video calling out a content creator by the name of DJ Mule. Uh, uh, the video can be easily seen on my channel. It was, uh, I, I should honestly have had the link ready, but given that I was just distracted by my fucking chat, I don't have the link ready. Yes, I'm blaming my chat for not having the link ready, even though it's my own fucking fault. Uh, I'll grab you the link and I'll post it in here so you guys can go fucking watch the video if you Are want. Are you to. trying to say if like if you haven't seen my video about DJ Mule, it's wait, that's at that's at a timestamp. God damn it. Don't don't do the time. There we go. Here's the one. This is the video right here. Bam! Bam! Now none of you have any excuse. My video is now posted in the chat, in the chat, so that you all can enjoy it if you want to. I reviewed a video essay by a content creator, and I say that with, with big quotes, by the name of DJ Mule. It was, without a doubt, one of the worst video essays I've ever seen in my entire life. It was a hit piece on a, a, another streamer by the name of Xander Hall. I'm quite fond of Xander Hall. I was very open of my friendship with Xander Hall in the video, and I tried to make it as clear as possible, my problems with the it, with the video were not that they were making fun of or targeting Xander Hall, but the way that they went about it. Now, unfortunately, uh, this this video has somehow managed to uh, garner some staying power in certain spheres. And when I say certain spheres, I mean an incredibly small clique of people have basically continued to promote this video, despite the fact that basically that, that this video has somehow managed to be a unity point between even former worst enemies on the internet, okay? The, dis the agreement that this video fucking sucks, that this hit piece was a lazy piece of propagandistic garbage, managed to unite some of the polar opposite communities on the internet because it's just such a blatantly dishonest and bad video. By the way, Thick Boy with the $10, thank you very, very much. So, it's a really, really bad video. My video speaks for itself. I know, yes, literally, me and even, even Destiny and I agreed that the video was trash, okay? It was, it was, I, I couldn't even believe it. It was like hell had frozen over. That is a, that is so un unlikely. But it happened. It was a terrible video. Now, unfortunately... Um, a number of things have happened in the sort of aftermath of this video, which is that a certain clique of people on the internet have circled the wagons. If you're not familiar with what it means uh, to, to circle the wagons, uh, let me explain that concept to you. Circling the wagons is when one of you, one of a group, comes under attack, everyone else circles around to protect that member. It's a... Uh, uh, it, 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 it's a it's a term that is often used to sort of point out uh, like uh, excessive in group preference. Okay, yo, snake freak, sneak snake freak. Thank you so much for the ten dollars. You're very very welcome. Um, it's like uh, uh, yeah, circling the wagons. Somebody, one person in a group gets attacked. Everybody else circles around them to protect them. Now, obviously, every group of every group, or every fr group of every friends, wait, what? Every group of friends on the planet uh, obviously does this to a certain degree. We all want to look out for the people uh, uh, that we care about. However, certain examples of, wa of circling the wagons gets to a point of just unbelievable dishonesty and it's okay for us to call out when someone is being so partial to a, a perceived member of their group that they are incapable of acknowledging the things that went wrong. And that is something that has absolutely happened with this particular situation. Now, looking at these tweets here, 
you might notice that, hey, a lot of people engage with this tweet, and a lot of people engage with this tweet, and we're going to talk about uh, these two tweets because in the, in the nightmare morass of Twitter, I have seen an unfortunately large amount of defense for DJ Mule. And some of the people doing defense for DJ Mule are people with huge accounts. And the things that they're defending DJ Mule for is nothing short of deep hypocrisy, okay? And let me, let me sort of qualify uh, what I'm saying here. The video that DJ Mule made was not just low quality. The video that DJ Mule made was horrifically abusive. It did abuse apologia. It was absolutely packed to the absolute brim with verifiable lies. It speculated on the relationship of somebody he doesn't know per personally and speculated in the face of evidence to simply just to propose the idea that somebody Xander Hall, who had been the victim of very obvious abuse, was actually lying about his abuse. In the video, DJ Mule not only downplayed the severity of the abuse, the abuse, but also repeatedly told Xander Hall to have makeup sex or that he should have just gotten over it, that he should have gotten good at, at gotten better at his relationship and maybe he wouldn't have gotten abused. It was genuinely disgusting. It was a truly toxic video, and no one on the left should be able to watch that video and conclude that it was like the correct path, that it was making arguments that were good, regardless of whether its quality was bad, which its quality was indeed bad. So the reason why I think it's a big deal, the reason why I've made, I, like, like uh, I've, 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 I've stuck to my guns on how bad that video was is because I think that it's easily qual it's easily qualified. I think that you can very easily point out exactly what was wrong with this video that is unequivocal or close to it. But unfortunately, not only have people who want who who uh have people who who agree with the with the the uh video content creators general political prescriptions. And when I say I agree, it's funny because they won't actually take a stance on any of the actual claims made in the video. They only agree with the sort of general political predilection of the, uh, of the, of the, of DJ Mule. Nobody has been willing to actually sit down and say, yeah, DJ Mule's video was good. Here's the things I agree with. Because if you were to do that, you would have to address the fact that there are factual there are issues of pure factuality that DJ Mule not only made mistakes on, but misrepresented and then used those to jump into abuse apologia. Instead, what you see is people basically coming up with copy excuses as for why uh, it, the, all of the criticisms of DJ Mule don't matter. And one of the worst examples of this in recent memory is this individual here by the name of Kfa K of of, of Kfabe signifier on on Twitter, aka FD signifier. Some of you may know FD signifier is a pretty big YouTuber. I'm going to bring up his channel right now so you can get an idea. FD signifier does a bunch of YouTube, uh, sort of like lefty YouTube videos, and he's got 381,000 subscribers. So a pretty fucking huge channel we've got going on here. Okay. FD Signifier's got a big reach, okay? Not the biggest reach in the world, but significantly larger than myself, significantly, infinitely larger than DJ Mule, and significantly larger by about four times than Xander Hall, the person who, uh, who is being talked about in this video. And, and FD Signifier had a lot to say about uh, this video. Here's my view. Let's be charitable to Zan and say that DJ Mule got that whole situation wrong. That's definitely not good if that's your perspective. But the smear campaign and the harassment from Zan and the rest of those guys' fan base is excessive. And let's be clear, hypocritical. 
The folks that orbit in that debate space have some of the worst baggage. Some are still actively harming people in their behavior, let alone a number who are ex-white supremacists. This is a gigantic, massive whataboutism. Literally sidestepping. Well, what if Mule did lie about everything? What if he lied and came to conclusions that are disgusting? What if he lied in order to give the idea that Xander Hall is someone who he's not? Well, let's just ignore that because the folks that orbit in that debate space have some of the worst baggage. Some are still actively harming people in their behavior, let alone the number who are ex-white supremacists. Notice how there is no specificity whatsoever. Notice how it's just a bunch of vague bullshit. Well, I got frustrated because there was a lot of these. Like, take a look at this one. The fact that they decided to ride on Mule and try to oust him from the left to the point where I'm blocking people in my chat but want to give their own a pass is unambiguously trash behavior. DJ Mule does not, and the type of behavior that DJ Mule engaged with should not have a place on the left. There, there should be no room no flavor of leftism should be okay with, I don't care what type of leftist you are. No flavor of leftism should be okay with a guy who picks a, a, a seemingly easy target, makes up lies about them, lies about them for hours, spreads misinformation about them, accuses them of being an abuser when they were the one who was abused and they have the evidence and literally the person who he was trying to defend Xander Hall's ex literally showed up in the comments to say this video does not represent me because that's how bad that video was. Literally, the person, Xander Hall's own fucking ex commented on the video. Yes, literally, yes. And so FD Signifier, with his huge platform, decided to weigh in to defend Mule. Literally, that's what's going on here. This is a defensive mule. He's literally saying, oh, well, we shouldn't have treated mule badly, even if he did do everything that they said was wrong. So what FD Signifier's argument is here, FD Signifier is saying that because DJ Mule is a leftist, we should look the other way when he lies, uh, slanders, and, com and, co and goes complete abuse apologia. All of these things which are not acceptable social behaviors in general, but are especially not acceptable behaviors for a leftist. Abuse apologia has no space in the left. No space in any left I want to uh, uh, belong, uh, belong to. But I wanted to show something else because I had another response to this as well. So first I said, it's astonishing to me the levels of mental gymnastics that people will engage in to downplay a member of their online friend group engaging in raw, unequivocal, on-video abuse apologia that flies in the face of everything they claim to believe. This is erasure on top of blatant lies. Endless doubling down instead of just admitting that you were wrong and circled the, ragged, the wagons around an unrepentant liar and an abuse apologist who made a video mocking a victim of abuse for being abused. And yes, that is what DJ Mule's video did. If you don't, if you don't, if you're, if you feel like you don't have enough evidence to conclude that, I invite you to please watch my or any of the many videos that have now been made responding to DJ Mule. I made a video. Vosh made a video, um, Cherry made a video, uh, 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 Galay made a video. All of these are people with very different political backgrounds. Uh, I have very different opinions on things than Vosh does. All of our videos talked about different things, but all of us talked about a couple of things in common. Oh, and Ecofish. Ecofish also did a video. I haven't seen that whole video, so I can't really recommend it. But but a lot of people have recommended that video to me. I haven't watched the whole video. And this is where I got really mad. I was the first person to make a video responding to G DJ Mule's lie-filled hyper-parasocial video about Xander Hall. You and your buddies pretend I do not exist because showing your fans a vocal, very left trans woman calling out the guy you circled the wagons around is inconvenient to you. 
DJ Mule did not display anything close to leftist values in that video. His trash fire of a video was a shame to anyone claiming to hold leftist values. It was lies, personal squabbles turned into moral issues. Stop coping and admit that you were wrong instead of erasing all of the other people who've come out to talk about this. And by the way, I'm not the only one, just so you know. Even though I literally was the first person to react to DJ Mule's video, I reacted to it before Xander Hall did because I saw the video, I saw the subject, and I looked at the video and I said, I need to react to this. And so I did because I had a hunch. I was the first one to react to that. And none of these people ever mentioned me. None of these people with these huge platforms, they pretend like I don't fucking exist. But you know what else? It would be one thing if some some of the smaller accounts that reacted to this, they didn't maybe know about, but I was the first one. I am not some like, I'm not a small figure in the online left. I, I have 400, almost 450 viewers right now. I'm not a small figure. I was the first person to react to it. They don't talk about me. But they also, of course, don't talk about Galay. They all, all, also, of course, don't talk about uh, 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 Cherry. They don't talk about any of the trans people, any of the femmes. They don't talk about any of the people of color. They don't talk about shark reacting to these sorts of things. They ignore us. They ignore Merrick because Merrick's a woman. They ignore everybody who's not convenient. And they only ever react, interestingly, to Vosh Z and Xander Hall and sometimes Destiny. It's a little bit weird, honestly. And it's a little bit insulting. It's a bit fucking insulting to see these gigantic video essay streamers circle the wagons and go, Oh, the only reason they cared is because, oh, you dared to offend a cis man. That's bullshit. All, the people who spoke out about this, the first person to talk about this is a notoriously outspoken lefty trans content creator. Me. Fucking notorious. I am notoriously loud about trans rights. I am notoriously loud about my anarchist positions. But they can't talk about that because instead they're so devoted to protecting their own little in-group, to protecting their own little internal circle, their internal circle, their little online clique. And they have the gall to say that Xander Hall is doing an aesthetic of leftism. D one of DJ Mule's main points was that that debate bros and specifically Xander Hall were just using an aesthetic of leftism when these motherfuckers are de are deliberately protecting a guy whose video is obviously wrong whose they they can't even actually defend his video on its own terms they only have whataboutisms and in the process they have to pretend that people like me don't exist It's so fucking annoying. These people are fucking frauds. I, I, I have not been, I, I don't know, I don't know, it's so disappointing. It doesn't take much to just say, that guy, that's a fuck up. You know what's funny? It's really funny. All of these video essay perverts out there, they spend all their time talking about how streamers are never wrong and streamers communities will never call them out on shit. Fucking bullshit. Yeah, there's a lot of personalities in streamers. There's a lot of fucking egotistical personalities in streaming, just like in any entertainment industry. But you wanna know what? I've seen streamers get called the fuck out by their communities way more than I've ever seen a video essay pervert fucking admit that somebody did anything wrong. On this stream, and on basically every stream I've ever seen in the sphere of debate, there is constant disagreement. You guys know that some of my, some of the moments that I've had the most uh, blowback from have been me disagreeing with people like Vosh. I mean, literally with Vosh. Not just people with Vosh. Just literally Vosh. I have disagreed with Vosh very openly. The idea that like debate streamers are the ones circling the wagons is absurd. When in front of us, we have witnessed a fucking nobody who made a trash video doing blatant abuse apologia, being a blatant fucking bully, gets an entire sphere of, of video essay people fucking circling around 
and doubling down and promoting a video that is just full of lies. Just spreading it all over the place. The only fucking reason this video has had any chance at getting, and getting the fucking light of day is because there are people sitting out there fucking defending it even though it's fucking trash. It's trash stylistically, it's trash factually, it's trash morally. Anyway, I get fucking mad about it. I get really fucking mad. And you know what? I'll own this, by the way. I, I did advocate that DJ Mule should be ousted from online leftist spaces because he should. If your if your uh, if your biggest contribution to online left culture is some shitty hit piece where you blatantly lie and 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 do and engage in blatant abuse apologia, it, we're not just talking about a little joke here. The guy made a fucking two hour video screaming lies about another content creator, verifiable lies, and then just saying that there's nothing wrong with him being abused uh, and that, that, that he has mommy issues. Like, what the fuck? Yes, we should oust people who engage like that. We should not give space to that. We should not, we should draw a line and say that is not acceptable behavior. Abso fucking lutely. Absolutely. But of course, you know, FD signifier will never respond to me. No responses, no responses to my, to my, to my tweet. No response from, uh, from FD signifier, even though I was the first person to do a video on this, even though I was the one who brought mo the most severe critiques against DJ Mule, nothing. Just ignore. Just ignore it. They don't care. How convenient. And I'm used to this sort of shit, by the way. I'm used to being ignored when it's inconvenient. But it especially tends to happen from these essay pervert, wagon circling, back padding, corrupt motherfuckers. I honestly believe that FD didn't even watch the video. I don't think he cares because I think it's a team sports thing. I think that for people who engage, who act like this online, it's about preserving their click and nothing else. And keep in mind, those clicks are always really embarrassingly flimsy because unlike a, a click that happens in high school where people have to spend every day together, these are just people milling about in the, z the same vague spaces on the internet. These are, there's no actual real friendship here. It's just, well, it's team sports. Well, you, you don't like Xander Hall and I don't like Xander Hall, so that means it's okay for you to do whatever the fuck you want. It's got to get under your skin so bad, Demon Mama. You work your ass off in this sphere and they just shove you aside to attack Vosh and Zan. Yeah, it's kind of funny, isn't it? It's not even, it's not even like, like, I don't, they don't need to fucking attack anybody. I don't care. I just want, I, just give some fucking credit where credit is due, for fuck's sake. Are you fucking kidding me? The one thing that gives me some sense of fucking, uh, of fucking validation here this the one thing the, my consolation prize is the fact that this this got 81 retweets and this got 969 likes so this clearly hit a, this clearly hit a nerve in our spaces clearly people understand what i'm talking about but holy shit Ignoring me because I'm inconvenient is literal transphobia. Yes, it is. It's because because they want to have an easy message Which is that debate is all bad because it's white men who do it, etc, etc They don't want to have to deal with the actual question Which is hey if you have a problem with something a specific streamer did if you have a problem with the structure Articulate that problem, but instead what they want to do is they want to do the stupid fucking cool tube bullshit It's embarrassing it's so fucking embarrassing. It's so bad. Now, there were a lot of very, very, very angry people in my comments. Uh, oh my god. But you guys want to see one that made me fucking happy? You want to see? You want to see something that made me really happy? Do you guys remember fucking Chaos is Mel?
Do you remember this fucking pathetic clout leech? Chaos is Mel. You're literally irrelevant to 90% of conversations, but it's funny you think you matter. You're nothing but a clout shark now. It's so funny. Whopping eight likes, but uh, it's okay. I got my win. I got the, uh, I got my fucking eight likes. Is this the genocide biad? Yeah, this is the person who did blatant genocide uh, denial and blatant genocide apologia on stream. George Lucas ratio. Also, it's extremely funny. It's extremely funny that her response is to say I'm irrelevant when I am the only reason, and I'm gonna say this, I am the only reason anybody even knew that DJ Mule and his trash buddies were pushing this shit out. I am the reason that they knew. I am the reason that anybody else reacted to this shit. So if you want to act like I'm not irrelevant, you might want to make, or that I'm irrelevant, you might want to make a better case than the video that I literally made the, the, this side of the internet aware of. Mel is fucking giga cringe. Mel is Mel is fucking the the definition of irrelevant. Mel literally only bitches on the internet. That's all that she does. She does nothing else. What the fuck is wrong with Mel? Mel has no life, and Mel realizes Mel realizes that she can get like jerk off likes. Actually, honestly, to be fair, none of her tweets actually have likes here. She doesn't. She hasn't even been able to get the jerk off likes from fucking tanky internet, which is sad. But yes, by the way, uh, Mel is an unequivocal genocide apologist. If you don't believe me on that claim. Please watch Mel's conversation about the Uyghur genocide with uh, Dylan Burns, in which Mel literally laughs and jokes and hee hee oo woos and dodges the question and then eventually just does complete apologia for the Uyghur genocide. Yeah, oh yeah, and of course Mel's conversation with Vosh, which was fucking stupid as well. Anyway, uh, all of this, all of this ranting and junk food drama, drama stuff is just to say, uh, I see it. I see what happens. I know why I'm ignored. I know why the, the essay perverts pretend that I don't exist. I know why they don't promote my content. I know why they won't actually address me. They won't argue with me because what they need to do is they need to erase me. Literally, the fact that I have done that, even though I, even though I've literally been openly critical of debate format, even though I literally left the debate scene in 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 favor of doing more personalized one-on-one -on -one debates, even though all of those things are true, they do not mention me because it would be inconvenient to their narrative that all that all debate is stupid and everybody who likes debate streamers is stupid. It is the dumbest fucking. It is the most embarrassing and pathetic, like Xbox versus PS4 type mentality. Except they all do it with this like. Uh, they all do it with this, like, uh, empowered sense of self-importance. Like, oh, I'm doing Xbox versus PlayStation for leftism. I'm doing anti-capitalist PlayStation versus Xbox. It is turbo-liberal, and it's really funny. It's, it's super fucking funny that, that, that they're, it's the turbo liberalists, and these people are the ones who consider themselves the truest leftist. Uh, everyone else is a leftist in aesthetic only. I'm the real leftist. That's why I, you know, circle the wagons around the guy who made false claims and did abuse apologia against a guy who's very openly a social democrat. It's fucking stupid. But also, it's a uh, it's it's blackpilling about the way that people behave online.
I feel like maybe making an actual essay form segment of this sometime, openly call out some of these types would maybe do well to get this sort of message out to their circles. Their circles are not interested in, um, uh, their circles are not interested in actually hearing this. Uh, if their circles were interested in, in hearing any counter message, uh, they would actually engage with the, the, the many, many critiques. And here's the thing, like I said, uh, it would be one thing if I, if I, if like my channel was not the first ones to, was not the first channel to react to this fucking video. It would be one thing, it, you know? Okay, my channel's not that big. Maybe they didn't know I did a video, but I was the first. And they just pretend like no one except for white, white men, problematic, toxic, toxically masculine white men ever respond to anything like this. They all, but they don't just ignore mine, they ignore everyone else. Chariot's video is a video essay that is vi that very calmly, with no dunks or anything like that, goes through this video. Galay's video has almost no dunks in it whatsoever. It's a very peaceable but firm rejection of DJ Mule's video essay. No one ever fucking mentions that. No one ever fucking talks about it. It just goes to show you, they don't tolerate any counter messaging. Their message is, the line that they are going to tow is all debate bros are cis white guys who, who are actually secretly white supremacists. And you know what? It's funny because you can see that literally right here. Hold on, let me grab this right here. Where's the, where the where'd it go? Oops, I set it aside. One second. It's right here. Here we go. Right here, we scroll right down. Here we go, right here. The folks, weasel word, that orbit in that debate space have some of the worst vet baggage. Some are still actively harming people in their behavior, let alone the number who are ex-white supremacists. Vague, vague, vague guilt by association. Name it, call it out. Why don't you address whose video you have an issue with? If you have an issue with Vosh, call out Vosh's video. If you have an issue with one of us, call it out. But instead, they just want to imply that everybody in the debate space are secret ex-white supremacists who don't give a shit about anything. It's a gross weaponization, the laziest weaponization of social justice, of leftism, to try and def defend your fucking friend group. It's fucking embarrassing. It's fucking cowardly. And yes, I do agree that no, that this should not be an acceptable behavior on the left. Is it because Zan used to have an anti-SJW phase? He didn't. Zan never had a public anti-SJW phase. Before Zan was a streamer, Zan was into some alt-right pipeline stuff, and he his first big video, the first big video that Zan ever made was talking about how he got out of the alt-right pipeline and reformed his views. They don't care about that. They just don't like Zan, and, the, and they're trying to get other people to not like Zan. Okay, guys, here, let me give you an example of this real quick, okay? Here's a real, here's a real quick example of this, all right? If I don't like somebody, I'm going to tell you that I don't like them, and I'm going to tell you the reasons that I don't like them. And you guys have heard that there are times, I've said this on stream, there are times when somebody I don't like, I just don't get along with them, or I think they're an asshole. And I'll tell you to your face, I think that person's an asshole. I don't get along with them. And that's my reasoning. I don't try to go, I don't try to make up something that they did so that everybody on the internet hates them unless I think they've done something that justifies people on the internet not liking them. For example, if someone's a Nazi and I have evidence that they're a Nazi, I will tell people, this person's a Nazi, you should avoid them because they're a Nazi. But what they want to do is invent whatever bullshit they can, whatever they can, whatever stretch they can, sometimes in this case with DJ Mule, literally lying, literally just making shit up just to justify damaging and hurting a person they don't like. Where did this massive wave of Xan hatred originate? That was, uh, what was the inciting incident for Thought Slime to kickstart it? Uh, Thought Slime is a creepy weirdo uh, who uh, has extremely weird parasocial relationships with anyone that he disagrees with on the internet. Um, Sophie also, 
extremely, extremely weird about the way that uh, that she engages with other people on the internet. Um, I don't know. Xander Hall, I think it, I think some people perceive Xander Hall as an easier target than Vosh because Xander Hall has a smaller community and Xander Hall's community is not as debate focused as Vosh's is. So they pick on Xander Hall assuming that, hey, uh, he's an easier target for us. They, they fixate on Xander Hall because he's, he's young and they think that makes him an easy target, but it doesn't. And they fail and DJ Mule failed the only reason that DJ Mule's video has any sort of standing is because of people like FD Signifier fucking going to bat for it, fucking defending him and offering him collaboration. This whole conversation, I know we never even talked about this. This whole conversation started because somebody said, hey, FD Signifier, you probably shouldn't have DJ Mule on your show when DJ Mule is engaging in these types of behaviors. We don't think it's a good idea. And then FD Signifier had a giant fucking meltdown because someone told them, told him that giving a platform to DJ Mule, whose only real claim to fame is making a obviously false fucking ap abuse apologia video. It's fucking stupid. And it is bullying. I don't care if you don't like Xander Hall. Fucking saying that he that, that he was an abuser when you don't have any evidence of that, when you have evidence to the comment to the contrary, downplaying the abuse that he experienced, making fun of him for being abused at all, making fun of him getting thousands of dollars stolen from him by somebody he loved and trusted is not okay. That's not fucking leftism. Yes, we did watch the DJ Mule Vosh video. It was stupid, but it was boring. Oh, yeah. And you guys want to see the fucking icing on the cake? Here. You guys want the icing on the cake? Here's the fucking icing on the cake. This was what I was going to show, and thankfully somebody just sent it. I already had this one queued up. Here's DJ Mule's Patreon. Well, here I am, 20 days later, and the plan to get more patrons and Twitch support to afford to live from my latest video has failed spectacularly. You're right, it fucking did. You're right, it fucking did. And your video sucked. You failed spectacularly. You failed and your friends have failed. And the only thing I can say, I am only thankful in one way that this video exists which is that it made it easier for all of you and all of, all, of, all of my viewers and all of the viewers of the other people who criticized DJ Mule. It, it acted like a barium test. It revealed all of the people who are totally willing to look the other way for some skeezy, gnome-looking motherfucker to, make, to, to literally lie about a target they think is okay for bullying. Also, here's a here's a small uh, here's a small hint. If you want to be a, sh a piece of shit, if you want to be like a piece of shit uh, uh, grifter, you should try grifting to the right, because um, it's really fucking. As it turns out, lefties are really principle oriented people, and they're way more likely to not support you if you do something that disagrees with their principles. Now, I'm not saying all lefties have good principles. Some lefties have really stupid fucking principles, but. They are more, as a, as a demographic, the left is way more principled. You motherfuckers will cancel uh, your favorite content creators over goddamn anything. With very few exceptions. The left is not where you want to grift for that. You, have you noticed that all of the, uh, have you noticed that all of the like lefty grifters have now started to have to grift to the right? You know, like Brianna Joy Gray, like Jimmy Dore, because it's hard to make a living grifting anybody on the left. Lefties care about principles. They have to. The left has never been in power in America. So you don't have anything else to ride on. You can't just pander. You, I mean, you can pander, but you have to pander to the principles. You can't just like say whatever the fuck you want and say the buzzwords.